CataractCoach.com, Choosing FACO Settings, Part 10. Give me specific starting settings, please. So before we get into any of the programming of the energy, which is in green, and the fluidics in the blue, look down here. We need to know what's the specific FACO needle, 20 gauge here, and what's the sleeve size, 2.75. Those will both affect the fluidic flow, so you must make adjustments accordingly. Starting off with pre-FACO, the goal here is just to remove some of the anterior cortex to access the nucleus. So we can decrease the infusion pressure here. 70 is too much. Let's try about 50 or even less in terms of millimeters of mercury, which is a bottle height of about 60 centimeters. Now the vacuum is low, flow is relatively low. Those are appropriate and low amount of energy. Now for the sculpt mode, we want to groove these channels. Sculpt these channels in the nucleus for divide and conquer or stop and chop. Look at the options. We can do continuous. If you're going to do continuous, I think you'll be better off using more longitudinal. So let's not do torsion, let's do longitudinal. And that's continuous where the foot pedal will control the energy. That looks pretty appropriate. Now the vacuum and, and pressure settings are all appropriate. Remember, you just need to aspirate out this anterior cortex initially, but now we need to groove it and take away the lens material. So pulse mode is a very appropriate way of delivering the energy. The key here is to make sure you have a high pulse rate so it cuts smoothly. So 80 to 100 pulses per second. That's good. Time on, a duty cycle here of at least 50%. This is the amount of time on. So 50% time on is good, but I think for this, try 75 to 100. And then longitudinal energy is given there as a percentage. We can also use a burst mode. Remember that burst mode just decreases the burst interval as you step the foot pedal down. So here it's gonna end in continuous energy. So that will work as well. But I think the sweet spot here is gonna be a pulse mode. And again, the fluidics is just enough to aspirate the material. For chop though, now we need to adjust fluidics. We need more inflow, higher infusion pressure, higher bottle height. You need a much higher vacuum. So this is 425 millimeters of mercury and a quickly ramping up aspiration flow rate. So it ramps up to 34 and then flattens out to 40. Now for the energy, you can give it all as just a pulse. And here's pulse with torsional only. And that works very well. High pulse rate, 60 pulses a second. And what's IP? That's just an occlusion mode. For this machine, they call it intelligent FACO. But all it is is when the machine senses occlusion, it can change or ramp up the settings for you. That way, when we know there's nuclear material stuck on the tip and we achieve that 95% of the vacuum limit, we can now increase our duration of the pulses to 80 milliseconds and have that ratio of longitudinal to torsional. So more longitudinal is better for a dense nucleus. Now those are very appropriate settings. Doing something like this would work very well for your chop settings. You can also use a burst mode. Burst mode is a natural fit for a chop mode. And so here we're starting off with a very long rest between bursts. We can have torsional here and we can also adjust the duty cycle, but we can ramp in a combination of longitudinal and torsional at the same time. And so this is a good way of, of optimizing it. Epinucleus mode, it's just to remove that soft epinuclear shell. You don't need much energy. This is fine. Cortex, of course, all about the fluidics. High vacuum and very high flow right off the bat. 40 cc's per minute of flow. That's important. Polish mode, again, low flow, low vacuum settings. You want to barely touch the capsule. And finally, viscoelastic removal, much higher vacuum, very high flow that we ramp up, and we can even increase that irrigation factor to help get the viscoelastic out of the eye. So these are good starting settings, and you tell me what works best in your hands.